Well, good morning. Uh, it's really an honor uh, uh, to welcome you here today to this uh, remarkable milestone in the history of a, an amazing scientific uh, endeavor. Um, I think I'll say this once, probably a couple times. I have a few comments here. L let's all thank Bob Hazen for his spectacular leadership. So over the past decade, uh, the Deep Carbon Observatory uh, has built a diverse global community of more than 1,000 scientists, 300 of which apparently are here today, uh, and united, right, united around, really, around one thing, the curiosity about the quantities, movements, forms, and origins of carbon in and on the Earth. From the beginning, this has been an interdisciplinary effort, bringing together geologists, mineralogists, geophysicists, chemists, biochemists, microbiologists, and technologists for a decade of discovery at the intersection of the geosphere and the biosphere. These researchers represent many institutions, as Bob has already said, from across many nations. Their collaborations have demonstrated a really powerful uh, results which can be achieved when we break free of our research silos, our research uh, stovepipes, and work across these disciplines to work with various colleagues. Now, as we mark this decade of scientific success, I think it's worthwhile to look back at what originally conceived this really remarkable project. Uh, in 2007, uh, Bob Hazen uh, was giving a talk at the Century Club in New York City. Uh, and in this talk, he spoke about uh, the, how geophysical reactions might have played a substantial role in the development of life on Earth, uh, a concept that's now come to the forefront. Uh, it was, by all accounts, fascinating. I wasn't there, but I know people who were there. Uh, it was, by all accounts, fascinating and thought-provoking and by chance, maybe less than chance, Sloan was there in the audience. And over the next few months, Bob, now engaging with the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, uh, kept expanding on the ideas in this presentation, thinking more and more about central importance of carbon on the surface, but also buried deep inside the Earth's crust. And discussions with Sloan ultimately led to a first workshop on the deep carbon cycle, which took place at the Carnegie Institution here in DC uh, on campus in uh, on May 2008. Hope I get the dates all right, Bob. Um, the workshop drew more than 100 people, uh, scientists who began formulating some really important questions, which still form some of the basis for what the DCO has been addressing, such as, what is the origin of deep carbon? How does this deep carbon con combine with other minerals to form more recent minerals? How do these minerals move, and how do they evolve? And finally, what is this deep connection between life on Earth, in Earth, uh, and the carbon that's in the earth. So this workshop made it clear that this was really an important, potentially transformative research direction. And so after two years of additional planning and collaboration, the Deep Carbon Observatory was officially launched in the August of 2009. So and ever since then, Carnegie has served as the home of the DCO with Bob leading its scientific vision, but also the DCO secretariat, where we had a team of scientists and, and staff providing central coordination, oversight, and management. Originally, Sloan had published, and we'll hear from Adam in a minute, Sloan had, had committed, uh, pledged $4 million to this program over three years to begin the project. And since then, Sloan has invested millions, tens of millions of dollars in the Deep Carbon Observatory. And that investment in itself has leveraged hundreds of millions of dollars across the globe, enabling this project in, to, to, to produce an incredible scope of science and remarkable impact. And let me take this opportunity to say this, that Sloan has been really critical in this endeavor. That partnership has been very, very important for, for us and for this whole community sitting here. The glue that held us together was Sloan's original investment. And their dedication and willingness, importantly, to take a risk on a project, which at that time wasn't obvious, uh, has really helped to transform the way we understand our world. So over the next few days, you're going to hear about some of the most interesting results of the past decade of discovery. Uh, but the impact of DCO extends well beyond the science that it produced. And in my mind, one of the most important things it's done is, of the DCO, has been its emphasis on early career researchers. Bob mentioned this. Uh, the DCO has, an, has had an explicit goal from the very beginning of strengthening the geophysical research community through training some of the next generation of scientists. And so the ideas, techniques, the collaborations, the different uh, disciplines and fields across these disciplines created by this 10-year project, I think, will continue to yield novel results and exciting insights for the young researchers for decades to come, having learned how to do science at this interface. The DCO has also demonstrated the importance of data science, 
modeling, and visualization as fundamental tools for 21st century science. Back in 2007, it was just starting. It wasn't as obvious it is as it is today. So a decade later, it's really come to the forefront, and DCO has been a leader. This effort has enabled an international research network that has produced huge amounts of data, I would say, to, to quantify it, gobs of data. As we move forward into new generations of data and computing uh, methods, it is exciting to think in the ways that we will be able to create access and analyze these enormous new data sets. And moreover, discovery science at the intersection of the geosphere and biosphere is really ripe for data-driven discovery. So I want to congratulate all of you. I want to congratulate everyone here for their contributions to the DCO. For 10 years, you have worked in collaboration with colleagues around the world to advance the geophysical sciences, breaking disciplinary boundaries, embarking on daring field initiatives, delving deep into massive data sets, and always, always looking to the future. And just as importantly, you have created a bold, collaborative, entrepreneurial, and I would say quite successful model, a model for attacking large-scale, interdisciplinary, really hard scientific questions. So it's through your good work that, that you have charged through history to the present and the future of science. And I want to thank you all for doing that. Thank you. So now it is my pleasure to introduce the president of the Alfred P. Sloan, Fo P. Sloan Foundation, Adam Falk.